St. Maximus the Confessor, on difficulties in sacred scripture, the responses to Thalassios. Question 6. If, according to St. John, he who is born of God does not sin, because God's seed is in him, and he cannot sin, and if he who is born of water and spirit is himself born of God, then how are we who are born of God through baptism still able to sin? Response The mode of our spiritual birth from God is twofold. The first bestows on those born in God the entire grace of adoption, which is entirely present in potential. The second ushers in this grace as entirely present in actuality, transforming voluntarily the entire free choice of the one being born so that it conforms to the God who gives birth. The first possesses this grace in potential according to faith alone. The second, in addition to faith, realizes on the level of knowledge the active, most divine likeness of the God who is known in the one who knows him. In those whom the first mode of birth is observed, it happens that, because the disposition of their will has not yet been fully extracted from its passionate fixation on the flesh, and because they have not been completely imbued by the Spirit with active participation in the divine mysteries that have taken place, it happens, I say, that their inclination to sin is never very far away for the simple reason that they continue to will it. For the Spirit does not give birth to a disposition of the will without the consent of that will, but to the extent that the will is willing, he transforms and divinizes it. Whoever is shared in this divinization through experience and knowledge is incapable of reverting from what he, once and for all, truly and precisely became cognizant of in actual deed, to something else besides this, which merely pretends to be the same thing. No more than an eye, once it has seen the sun, could ever mistake it for the moon or any of the other stars in the heavens. In those, on the other hand, undergoing the second mode of birth, the Holy Spirit takes the whole of their free choice and transposes it completely from earth to heaven, and through true knowledge realized in actual deed, refashions the intellect with the blessed beams of light of God the Father, so that it is deemed another God, experiencing, through a permanent state obtained by grace, that which God does not experience, but simply is according to his essence. In them, their free choice clearly becomes sinless in conformity with their state of virtue and knowledge, since they are unable to negate what they have become cognizant of through actual experience. So even if we should possess the spirit of adoption, which is a life-giving seed that bestows the likeness of the sower upon those who are born of it, but do not offer him a disposition of the will pure of any propensity or inclination toward something else, we will, as a result, willingly sin even after being born through water and the Spirit. But if, to the contrary, we were to prepare the disposition of our will to receive cognitively the operations of the water and the Spirit, then through our ascetic practice, the mystical water would cleanse our conscience, and the life-creating Spirit would actualize in us the unchanging perfection of the good through knowledge acquired in experience. What is lacking, therefore, in each of us who is still able to sin is the unequivocal desire to surrender our whole selves in the disposition of our will to the Spirit.